we got here a 2003 Evo 8. Um, we are doing a boost gauge, oil pressure gauge, and then a wide band. Um, that's the car. Um, customer also did buy the pillar pod. Um, so I'll get that thing put on as well. I will show you how to run the um, oil pressure sending unit for the new gauge. Um, you will need a sandwich plate adapter for the oil filter. That makes it a lot easier for an install. Um, you will need new vacuum line, um, just a little bit thicker than what they provided. Um, other than that, self-explanatory as far as the install. Um, I did trace a vacuum leak from a previous install, so I got that fixed before I even started. So everything is ready to go. So the first thing we're doing is uh, running the vacuum line for the boost gauge. Um, it looks like it already has one, but when I traced it, um, it wasn't connected to anything and it was pinched in the middle of two metals. But like I said, it's already tapped in. So we will redo that and run a new brand spanking new line. Because I don't like these clear ones, as you can see, it kind of shrinks and melts and when it gets hot. But yeah, I will cut that off and run the new wire. Or vacuum line, my apologies. But everything ran. Um, I tapped in the vacuum boost gauge right here. Um, I ran it along to a hole that's already there from a previous install, I guess. So I just reused that. Then I zip tied it along the way for the oil pressure. And then, not sure if you can see it, but I ran it down there. Still zip tied in. Let's see if I can get a picture. The oil pressure sending unit is right there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's right there. It said rain it along, zip tie it all the way up. Here we are underneath the Evo. Um, I went ahead and mounted the uh, wideband O2 sensor. Um, it was already there's already a port in there since it's an aftermarket exhaust. Um, I went ahead and zip tied it running along the brake lines. And there will be a access hole that you can insert this to so you don't have to run it to the firewall. Um, I will show you what the grommet looks like once I cut it and put it back in place. But you want to secure it that way it doesn't be hanging and catching on something while he's driving. But that's what it all looks like underneath. Plugs right here. Like I said, everything's secured. Good to go. All I did was cut a slit on the grommet and slid the wire in the middle. Um, started kind of running it a little bit. Just I'm, I always put the black tape just to kind of secure it so it doesn't move around as I run all the wires. But yeah, that was the access hole uh, grommet, the one that I showed you from underneath while I was running the O2 sensor wire. So I got the uh, the vacuum line. Um, the wideband wiring harness and the oil pressure sensor um, harness. Um, I have it all zip tied. Kind of use common sense a little bit on where you zip tie it. Don't make it too tight. So as you can see it's kind of... All of these wires are not my install. So just in case you're wondering, I don't know what this wire is. So kind of like I said, it's not, it's not something I wired. I don't just leave everything hanging like that. But yeah, I need to cut the zip tie, but that's kind of rerouted. It's already going up. Everything is already right here. Getting it ready to plug it in. Um, it'll go from boost gauge or oil pressure, boost gauge to the wideband. That's the sequence that it'll be mounted. All right, to start mounting the gauge pod pillar deal, um, you will need a 730 seconds drill bit. As soon as you drill, uh, drill the hole all the way through, it came with this little tab clip deal that locks them together. So go ahead and drill that in, insert these, and it'll hold it together. Once you get everything drilled and have the clips holding it together, that's what it looks like. That's one, two, three, and then four. Um, the next step would be I will be drilling a big hole 
um, somewhere around in the back, um, just to kind of get the the wires to run through all the way here. After all, the wires do have they do need something to go through. So I will go all the way. I'll start from the very bottom and just drill a big hole and start running the wires all the way accordingly to where they're going to be. I need to clean up the hole, but just to give you a general idea, just drill a hole in the bottom so all the wires and the vacuum gauge uh, hose can go through and then you'll be able to run it from these little gaps. So I ran into a little situation. Um, the provided uh, vacuum line that um, Glowship provided, um, it came with these fittings. Obviously they accept the small vacuum gauge um, vacuum line that they provided. Um, since I ran a new vacuum line, it's a lot bigger. So I ended up having to go to Ace Hardware and getting one of these. Um, it's the same thread pitch as one of these, but with a bar fitting, so it'll directly go to the vacuum line that I ran. But other than that, everything is pretty much self-explanatory as far as running the wires and plugging everything in, except this one. Okay, for the ground, uh, I've tapped in to any metal. Um, you will need these type of fuse type of uh, piece right here this is the accessory signal it's the second one um, from the left and then you're gonna need a bigger one that's gonna be your 12 volt constant so it's always hot every time but yeah that's where you tap in the gauges and then you should be all good here's the first startup Everything works good. So here we are testing it. Um, the boost cage does not read any vacuum, so it kind of shows it's not moving, but it does show when it starts to build boost. 